come to order. Uh, let's take attendance. Dave Saxby. Here. Steve Harrison. Here. Dave Gass. Here. James Owen. Here. Amy Horse. Here. Trey Mitchell. Here. I believe Amy Horst is caller number two. Nope, Amy Horst is online. Okay. Okay, and then we have a couple of guests. Would you identify yourself, Greg? Yeah, Greg Casper with the financial group. Okay, and who was the other one? There was somebody else. Dave. Okay. Joe, Joe Grosh is on the line. Joe and Grosh, thank you, Joe. Ch chair, okay. chair, um, chair. Yes. Um, just for the record, Mayor Vandersteen and uh, City Administrator Wolf are in the council chambers with us. And David Lynn, who is online, is the applicant for the Historic Preservation um, Grant as well. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Uh, let us pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. Um, are there any conflicts of interest with any items on this agenda? Hearing none, let us proceed. Uh, approve the minutes of the September 23rd meeting. Chair will entertain a motion. Who moved? Second. Soxie moved. Who seconded? Harrison. Harrison seconded. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Chair votes aye, motion carries. Okay, discussion and possible action on the Historic Preservation Facade Grant for work at 1136 Indiana Avenue. You had materials in your um, packet. Staff, would you take it away? Sure, so as I mentioned before, David Lynn is on the phone and he is the owner of uh, 1136 Indiana. We're working with him on some other funding programs that the city rolled out recently. And um, as we were talking, I mentioned to him about the facade renovation program. So he's looking at doing some enhancements to this building and the document that's attached, the IFC, there's a picture of the building so you know which one it is. Um, but he's got a con uh, proposal from uh, Jennifer Lurkey of Legacy Architecture to help put together research plans and drawings and research the building. So we have money in the budget for historic preservation and we're recommending approval. Great. Are there any further discussion? <clears throat> I've always admired this building, I have to tell you. Every time I pass it, I think, that's a good looking building. So thank you so much for thinking about preserving it. And thank you so much for the opportunity to do so. I really appreciate the, uh, the chance. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. Chair will entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. Uh, move to approve. Let's do Harrison. Move to approve. Second by um, course. Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, oh, Madam Chair, one more. In favor say aye. Yep. Chad. W one more. One more comment, just so that the authority is aware. This is a seventy-five twenty-five grant, so we pay seventy-five percent up front, and then if it moves into construction, we pay the remaining twenty-five percent. If it doesn't move into construction, the applicant is responsible for that twenty-five percent. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. Okay. Motion on the floor. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 Thank you so much. Good luck with the renovation. Thank you. Thank you so much for the approval. Really appreciate it. Thank you. 
Okay. Um, we've got a discussion and possible action on a community land grant ground lease rider for the South Pier Family Investment Development on South Pier. Let's hear a little background from uh, Chad first. Let's hear a little background from Attorney Adams, who happens to be on the line and maybe understands this a little bit better than I do. Okay, Chuck, take it away. Yeah, I just got on, so I haven't uh, pulled up the document yet. But uh, uh, in, in essence, we're being asked to sign on to, um, it, it really is a modification of the lease, but it's designed to, it, it's not all that different uh, in function from a lot of times we'll sign off uh, when, when a bank uh, gets, uh, you know, gets funding through FHA or through other things, and we'll sign off on these riders uh, that basically give the, the mortgage holders some rights under the lease. The difference with this one and, and the comments that I had sent out uh, to, to Chad's department on this is that this is a little more all-inclusive. There's, there's more to it than sort of the typical ones. Uh, and so there are a few areas where, where I, I had some uh, concern, but, uh, but in general, what it does is it protects the rights of the mortgage holder uh, under the lease should the, um, the, the entity to whom we are leasing uh, end up having financial issues. I have a question. So does the does the modification in any way abrogate our rights for the property that we are leasing or just the building on top? So it, it applies to the ground lease. So yes, it, it does have an impact on um, our, our ground lease uh, terms. It, it, it is in essence a modification of the ground lease uh, but specific, you know, only to uh, providing additional rights to the mortgage holder. So, could the mortgage holder own the property under the building? Yes. On on what sort of an example of that. Can you give me an example? Yeah, I was hoping to do this based on the actual document, but I'm not, uh, oh, maybe it's underneath here. Um, I'm pulling it up. But in, in essence, it, it has to do with what happens if the, um, if the mortgage holder or if the, if the uh, organization that leases, um, uh, if, if it, you know, goes into default on its loan. Basically, a couple of things happen. We have to provide um, notice if there are defaults by uh, the, the lessee. Um, uh, on, on our land lease, we have to provide that information to the mortgage holder uh, in writing. We have to give them a certain amount of time to act on it. Uh, we, we give them basically some rights to um, take over uh, uh, the, the lease uh, in favor of the lessee. Um, and the, what's different about this particular writer um, is that it, there's just a few more of those kinds of terms. We, we, we give up um, you know, more time, uh, uh, more things have to happen um, before we can sort of take action against um, uh, the lessee should there be a uh, um, a default. In uh, most most of the things in here um, are, are fairly standard. Uh, but yeah, if, if if they were to not pay their mortgage, the mortgage holder has the ability to come in and um, and take care of various uh, types of defaults. So if, if in addition to paying their mortgage, for example, not paying their mortgage, uh, they're not paying us our rent. Uh, the, we have to provide that information to uh, the mortgage holder. The mortgage holder could then uh, come in, uh, in and take over the lease uh, on behalf of uh, the lessee. 
Um, and then there are some specific terms uh, as to what what would apply to the mortgage holder if they would take over that are just somewhat different than the, than the terms that we have with the, uh, the lessee. So, so, Roberta, if I can ask a question. So, Chuck, is this, it, how does this complicate it, the fact that this is a condominium project? And is this coming from South Pier Invest? This, this agreement is between the Redevelopment Authority and South Pier Family Investments, who is the, who will be the, I guess I, my question is, is there, there's a condo association that will ultimately be the leaseor of the property and, and is this, coming through, you know, Toby Watson, or is, or is this an, you know, is this an individual unit person that's purchasing that's requiring it? No, the, on its face, the rider is between, they say the city, but they should have had it be the redevelopment authority, and so that's got to get changed, and South Pier Family Investments. So uh, it is not related to the, um, you know, the potential new owners. Now, it may be, uh, you know, and, and I wish I had, you know, before I'd gotten this, I wish I'd had the opportunity to talk a little bit to Toby or the folks from, from there. Um, it may be that, that what they're doing is they're just tiding over until that all happens. Uh, and, you know, the, the, the anticipation is that this is going to be a fairly short term um, situation, but it is actually related to um, South Pier Family Investments as an organization um, taking out a mortgage uh, through Freddie Mac. So, so Roberta, th there was some communication. This came from somebody outside, and there was some communication that happened on the email that I was CC'd on, and Toby Watson, the developer, was asking why this is necessary and, you know, does this really have to be in place to move forward? And I guess I'm wondering, um, you know, I don't know if this thing is timely. I know they were trying to close on their financing a week or so ago. Um, but I guess my recommendation might be to hold this thing and allow staff to go back and try to get some further answers. I would to do that do you need a do you need a uh, motion to hold yes please okay i i would concur with that staff recommendation because i i for one don't understand quite exactly what this entails uh carol entertain a motion to hold i'll move this is amy Amy moved. And Dave Gaff seconded. I saw his hand Dave, up. <laughs> Rose. Okay, thank you. Amy moved. David seconded. All those in favor of holding this document, please say aye. 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 Make sure you're unmuted when you say aye. <laughs> okay, any, any objection? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you so much for that. Um, Madam Chair. It would be helpful if we had, if, it would be helpful if we had a couple of paragraphs in writing about what this is about for the next time. Thank you. Madam Chair, if you okay. could, Madam Chair, if you could please take 3.4 since Greg is on the phone and then we can talk about 3.3 before we go into closed session. Perfect. Okay, 3.4, discussion and possible action on the request for a business loan modification to the financial group. Chad, give us the background. So as I stated, Greg is joining us from the financial group on the phone and um, he had, we had conversation and he submitted a letter. So you'll recall a few weeks ago, we talked about his loan um, and not him not being able to meet the job uh, requirement to create another full-time equivalent position given the pandemic times that we're in. Um, so at the time we talked about fi him finding another lender and trying to maybe pay us off. I don't think that has worked out uh, perfectly, but he does have a 
recommendation that he's brought forward about paying off 25,000, which would be the equivalent of that one full-time equivalent uh, job that he was supposed to create. And then he would just continue to make payments on the remaining balance for the jobs that he has created. So given the times that we're in, staff was recommending approval of that. We think that that um, is, a, is a good compromise to the situation and it gets us off of the requirements of him creating another full-time position. Okay, thank you. I recommend approval. David Soxy, move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Harrison. Um, Greg, thanks so much for working this through for us so that we can all move forward in these strange times. Okay. Um, anybody have any further thoughts, comments? Motion on the floor. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Greg, for being here, and thanks Thank for you. working it through for us. Thank you very much, everyone. Appreciate your time. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Uh, back to 3.3 .3 on the agenda. Review of South Pier Live Work Guidelines. This came up. I asked Chad to put this on the agenda. Um, and this came through in your packet of information, and we see it here on the screen. Uh, it's the Live Work Supplemental Guidelines, and this actually came to Redevelopment Authority in 2011. And we looked at it and did some modifications to the original plan. Um, Chad, you want to talk about it? So I'm not, the whole plan has been provided to you. I'm not going to spend time reading it to you, but um, there's three pages that I just want to highlight for the authority, and that would be uh, page six. So let me get there. So this was the original master plan that was um, put together back in 2000 when the, um, when the, uh, when this was originally put in place. And then as Roberta said, it was updated in 2011, so you can kind of see uh, the layout and the, um, the full plan for the, the strategic plan, if you will, for the entire uh, peninsula. If we look at the next page, page seven, this outlines the areas where, um, the areas that are public places that were planned into the, um, into the development. So when you look at these, these are all uh, in place except for letter H, which is the uh, purple area. That was, that's just a regular street. It was never set up as a promenade, but it's a street with public access. So, you know, there, when you look at the particularly letter E and letter F, the whole resort side of it is all public. Letter E is the, the circle, which is all public. And then you have these key connector points with these promenades along the waterfront that kind of connect the flow of the, um, of the peninsula. So um, when we look at it, it describes in more detail where all those locations are and what their uh, reasons for being set up. But, you know, there is public space that was planned into the original master plan for how this peninsula would function. And then on page 10, um, this talks about the uh, permitted building types. So it talks about two types of shanties, what they, they called an enhanced shanty and a residential row shanty. So um, the, the um, stuff that was developed in phase one and phase two by Portscape, we would consider to be residential rows. But you can see the orange highlighted areas um, for the additional kind of development with one of them being the location that we're talking about today. So uh, that location in front of the Blue Harbor Resort was always planned to be in the master plan. Some type of um, housing, whether it was an enhanced shanty or residential road development, um, and it lays out in the plan what that stuff, what it looks like. So the development, the design that you see in the first phase and second phase by Portscape really takes into the requirements that were put in place by this plan. So in a nutshell, that's 
Um, that's it. I'd be happy to answer any questions that anybody might have, but this was adopted in 2011 and has been used to this day. Perfect. Thank you. Any questions of staff? Chair? So you're basically recommending that we go forward with this? Well, we'll talk about it. Let's, that's the next item. So, the Chair? This is the, back, this is the background. Yes? This is Todd. May I speak? Yes, you may. Thank you. Um, RDA authority, I guess, you know, to answer your question, um, we provided the, uh, your, you guys the, to review and up and remind you of the 2011 strategic plan. The, the city and council, um, and I'm speaking for the council, but I, I'm sure that they would agree with me. Um, the strategic plan is what we put together and that we support. And I know that it took, you know, a very long time to actually fill and get to where we are today. And as you can see, there are, there are no um, parks and open green spaces other than along the riverfront as outlined. So if you guys are looking for um, direction on what the city is asking, we are in support of the strategic plan that you guys just took a look at. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Um, we're getting a significant amount of feedback, so if you could mute your um, mute your mics unless you're speaking, it would be helpful. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. That was for our review and background, and we can now move into um, closed session. And we are going to convene in closed session under exemption provided in section 19.851E of the statutes where competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session related to development opportunities on the South Pier District and a possible business development loan with Johnsonville LLC. Chair will entertain a motion to move into closed session. Moved. James Owen moved. Is there a second? Amy Horst second. Amy seconded. All right, let's take a vote. It must be in person. Harrison. Yes. Owen. Yes. Mitchell. Yes. Gas. Yes. Horst. Yes. Boxy. David? All right, we still have a majority motion carries. All right, we are now in closed. Okay, we are now in open session from the Redevelopment Authority. Um, the chair will entertain a motion regarding the South Pier District um, Phase 3 development of Portscape. I'd move to adopt the, um, I guess you're, um, to, to lease the property to um, South, or whatever their formal name is, um, um, according to terms um, to be determined by city staff, city attorney, and uh, meeting all landscape requirements. Is there a second? Second. second. Second by Soxie. Okay, so it's been moved by Gas, seconded by Soxie. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. And, um, or regarding the business development loan for Johnsonville to create 12 jobs. All right, uh, chair will entertain a motion. Moved. Moved by Soxie, is there a second? Second. Second by Harrison, thank you so much. 
Any further discussion? So just to clar clarify, just to clarify, Chair, it's a $200,000 forgivable loan if they create at least eight jobs within three years. Pardon me, eight jobs, three years, $200,000. Okay. And All those in favor. Would be a good time to answer. I don't, David, I don't even know if Chad heard your question, but I think it's an appropriate time to, for that question. I did hear yeah, your. I just had a question. I did hear your question, Dave. And to answer your question, they have not changed the requirements for what I would call original CDBG. Um, we have received additional CDBG funds under the CARES Act. Um, two allocations, and those have different requirements, but their regular uh, programs, they have not changed any of the requirements. Okay. Perfect. Thank you for the question. That's relevant. Okay, motion on the floor, 200,008 jobs to Johnsonville. Any other discussions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you so much. Um, I believe that's the end of our agenda. Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. Harrison moved. Is there a second? Second. Are there any objections? Hearing none, we are adjourned. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm.